the Land Reclamation Act is a set of regulations that is meant to regulate um, mining operations, in particular industrial minerals. One of those type of operations are open pit operations. And with an open pit operation, you are required to submit a mine plan that includes post mine land use. So those acres that you've disturbed from mining, or um, you have the option of placing in four different types of inland use which would be uh, development, water impoundment, agriculture, or wildlife. And basically what that means is once they have completed mining, that they reclaim the land that would fit one of those categories. Any mine site that um, is you know, an operation that they want to mine, they have to submit an application to the Land Reclamation Program. Um, with that application, depending on the type of site it is, let's say for instance it's an open pit site, they'll submit the permit application, a mine plan, bonding documentation, public notice forms, company information forms, and basically the application is stating where they're mining it, how long they plan on mining it, the type of mineral that they're mining, and what they plan on doing with the land once they're done mining. Um, we run through all those forms, review them, make sure that they are correct, that their in uh, land use, their mine plan essentially, is reasonable so that they you know, can obtain those goals of the reclamation. Uh, once we deem that they've got everything complete, then we say that they can begin running uh, a public notice. All companies that are starting a new mine site transferring a site or expanding a site have to run a public notice. Now with the public notice they are required to send a certified letter to all adjacent and contiguous landowners to the mine plan. They are also required to run a public notice in a local newspaper, so as a newspaper within the county of that mine site that they are applying for. Um, and that runs once a week for four consecutive weeks. And once that's done, there is a 15-day period where the public may comment or request a public meeting. So the bonding process is associated with open pit operations um, and it is for their reclamation essentially. It's to ensure that they, uh, once they're done mining, that they reclaim the areas that they have affected uh, to whatever they specified in their mine plan. So, for example, if a company has 20 acres in their mine plan and that they've said that those 20 acres are going to be in development, then what we would do is, once they have requested a bond release, go out there, inspect the site. Uh, if we see that it is a free draining surface and that there are no erosions or stability issues, we would say you have met your reclamation goals and we now release that bond that is associated with those acres. Um, as far as bonding amounts, the first eight acres is $8,000 and then it is $500 for each additional acre after that. The purpose of bonding is to ensure that any company that has an open pit operation that requires reclamation um, simply can't leave that site after, after they're done mining. So um, the bonding is basically to ensure that the land is reclaimed to what it is. The Missouri Blasting Safety Act became law in 2007 and it mandated that the Missouri Division of Fire Safety register users of explosives and license blasters as well as investigate complaints from the public on blasting operations. The statute permits the local authorities having jurisdiction to issue blasting permits to determine what hours blasts are eligible to be conducted. So most municipalities, most fire protection districts across the state are involved with that aspect of the blasting pro project. Blasters in Missouri are required to be licensed now by the state. In order to get a license, they first have to complete an approved course of training, document a thousand hours of experience, and pass a test we have before they are eligible to be licensed. Their license is good for three years, at which time they have to renew, but also in order to renew, 
show documentation of 12 hours of continuing education since their initial licensing period. So it's an ongoing process. The placement of a seismograph is based upon a blasting term called scale distance, which takes into account the tons or the pounds of explosive used and the distance to structures. Typically, blasters are required to set up a seismograph at the closest uncontrolled structure to the blast. An uncontrolled structure would be a building that is not owned by the quarry or the blasting operation, and that's where the initial monitoring takes place. So every shot we regular document it. We have at least two seismographs set up at each shot. We uh, film each shot uh, and save all that records in case anybody ever needs it and we have to save it however long there's a possibility we may have to go to court on it. We use a uh, seismograph and the brand using today is uh, from Vibratech out of St. Louis. They, uh, when uh, Vibratech calibrates them, they put a seal on it and the next time they check them it cannot be uh, altered. We have one permanent one set up at this location and we have a, a portable one that we set up at whatever neighbor we deem is the, uh, the one we need to go to for that shot depending on where we are in the quarry. Uh, and th those are all uh, calibrated once a year to make sure that they are correct. The acoustic levels are also monitored by the seismograph. Seismographs not only monitor ground vibrations through the soil, but they also monitor the sound blast. The statutes and the promulgated rules spell out the limits for the vibrations. The vibrations as well as the acoustical limits are taken from publications of the U.S. Bureau of Mines and the Office of Surface Mining within the U.S. Bureau of Mines. So these are national standards based on 50 years of tests conducted by the federal government and the Bureau of Mines. The statute requires that first we are notified of blasting operations at least two weeks prior to the operation. If it's an ongoing operation such as a quarry or a construction project, there need be only one notification for an ongoing. Additionally, the statute sets out reporting requirements for all blasts, uh, seismograph requirements to monitor certain blasts, and with those requirements there are limits to the vibrations, both ground vibrations and acoustical levels. When we receive a complaint from the public about a blasting operation, we contact both the complainant first to get the details of the issue, then we contact the blasting operation and get copies of all their required blasting logs. We then do our own analysis of those blasting logs and compare their documentation and their seismograph documentations to the limits within the statutes. Should our investigation determine that there was a violation of the statute or the rules, be it record reporting, uh, an unlicensed blaster, or excessive vibrations. The statute then mandates that we issue a notice of violation to the blaster and the blasting company. That notice is simply a written notification that they have violated the requirements of the statute. Should there be habitual violations, the statute would then allow us to go to the Attorney General's office to seek uh, financial fines for those violations.